I'm going to show you a beautiful strategic performance in the Kalashnikov Sicilian. This is really wonderful stuff. And it's another game played by two amateurs. The last video also featured uh, some amateurs. And well, what I like about this is that it shows, you know, these, these uh, lovely ideas aren't just played by top players, but you can play them too. Um, I should mention that by chance, by coincidence, my chessable course on the Kalashnikov Sicilian is on sale at the moment. So do check that out. I'll put the links down there somewhere in the comment section. So here we go. This is a game I found um, in database recently and it really appealed to me. This was played in Poland between Alexander Dobrowolski and Maciej Stelmaszuk. Apologies if I've butchered those names. Um, so we saw in the last video that White played c4, the, the Marozzi, and my feeling is that black can generate good play because this d4 square is uh, available to that knight. But this time white plays just knight c3 and this is the alternative main line. I mean these, I think c4 and knight c3 are played in approximately the same number of games. And now the old move is b5, bishop b6 is also possible, but bishop b7 is, is the move that I recommend in my course. So now the knight redeploys from a3, comes back into the middle. b5 pushes the knight back, and knight f6. And now the main line is g3, but here white plays knight e to d5. Oh, there's a lot of a lot of colour on the board. Why is there a lot of colour on the board? Well, this illustrates the path of that knight. It's made seven moves so far. Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There you go. That explains all the colour on the board. And simply because of that, I believe that black has a decent position. Because if white has spent so many times just moving one piece, then, well, black is going to be ahead in development. And for that reason, I feel that black should be absolutely fine in this position. Now, in my course, I actually recommend castles in this position, just to get the king out quickly. But bishop e6 is also a decent move, and this is usually where the bishop belongs in this opening looking at the d5 square, challenging that knight. Bishop b3, so that's pointing down at the b6 square. And now castles, and bishop e2. So white is finally thinking about uh, developments for all these, all these pieces. b4, so the knight is attacked, and well, black would very much like to take that pawn if the knight moves away. So that's why knight takes knight check is played and the second knight replaces the first one that's just been exchanged off, plonks itself on d5. I know a lot of people that think, well, this is the problem with this opening for black, that white gets this sort of foothold in the middle of the board and there's a backward pawn. It's funny, that never bothers me because actually black can challenge this square very well. Now, here is your, if you've never seen the Kalashnikov first, here is your first bit of Kalashnikov strategy. The bishop here is blocked in by pawns. Bishop g5, though I call this in the course the breakout bishop. And this is one of the most common manoeuvres in the Kalashnikov. And, and positionally it makes total sense. You get rid of this bishop, which wasn't doing much, blocked by these pawns. And you exchange off this important bishop on e3. Well, that's the idea anyway. So, for example, if white played bishop takes, then, well, already the queen is on quite a nice square. And so, actually, this has weakened all white's dark squares, and specifically that square on d4. It's easier for that knight to hop in to d4. So 
white sort of kicks against that and plays bishop b6, avoids an exchange. Queen d7. But actually, you know, this bishop is on a pretty nice diagonal now. And if knight c7, uh, f3 was played here, I should say, but if knight c7, then the rook comes across. Knight takes, queen takes, bishop comes. Well, you can see the bishop is kind of trapped here. It has to come back to e3, and that's really horrible. And, well, obviously with these double pawns, that's a strategic disadvantage. That's, that's nice for black. In the game, white played f3, so it supports the e-pawn, but also leaves room for the bishop to come back to f2. And now, very nice move by black. A little poke with bishop h4 check. Well, that really forces g3 or induces g3. And now the bishop comes all the way back to d8. Now, in the course, again, this is nice strategy. I call this the bad bishop bounce. So, once again, it's trying to exchange off the this dark squared bishop, which will give black uh, perhaps access to some dark squares. But white doesn't have anything to do with that. Bishop e3, so white is still ducking the exchange, which I understand. You know, this bishop is a strong piece, and it protects a lot of important squares. Now, very nice move again. Queen b7, very common spot for the queen in these lines. So it supports the b-pawn, but also looks through to that knight on d5. So there's pressure is building on that, that knight. Castles, and here black played a5, which I think is, is an excellent move. I would also consider playing knight e7. Again, this strategically, this is so common in the Sveshnikov. Play the knight back. See, there are now three pieces attacking that knight on d5. And if this is exchanged, then basically black is winning control over d5. d5, the breakout move, will come soon. And suddenly black controls the centre. But a5 I like as well. This is... Well, again, a common theme. You can see that these two pawns are setting in motion a minority attack against these three pawns. It's nice. C3. Again, I would consider knight e7 in this position. I think this is... I think would basically just about force this move. And, yeah, nice minority attack. Soon we're going to be able to weaken these pawns. But rook c8 played, also very nice. I like that. That's so often where the rook belongs in Sicilian positions. King g2. Okay, a little tidy move. And finally, knight e7 comes. And yeah, if these are exchanged, then you can see there's some pressure here. Bishop is beautifully placed on e6. So there's pressure on c3. A little bit of pressure here. Um, if white exchanges, then you can see this minority attack is, well, functioning beautifully. This one pawn just squashes those two. It's going to, sooner or later, there's going to be a weakness to attack. And yeah, don't forget, d5 might come to liberate black's pieces as well. Black is, is better there. So instead, c4. So white is trying to keep hold of that knight. And now, bishop takes knight, pawn takes, and bishop b6. So this is classic Kalashnikov strategy. First of all, we had the breakout bishop coming to g5 to try and exchange off the, the, the uh, bishop on e3. And now we have the bad bishop bounce, as I call it. It's come all the way down the diagonal. It's bounced out to b6. This is great. Round the angles and ready to exchange off. Well, it's it's hard to deny the exchange now. If the bishop, you don't really want to retreat the bishop because this this will be a monster on d4. And if bishop takes, queen takes, well, you can see how the exchange will help black's queen. It's conquered this diagonal, and that looks looks very powerful indeed. In fact, yeah, after queen d2. We're back to a, 
a King's Indian Kalashnikov. Very typical. Here, well, this looks wonderful if the exchange take pla takes place. Look at those weakened dark squares. That's a dream for black. And if, let's say, rook c1, you could exchange. And here, f4. Uh, rook c8 also possible, but I like f4 going for the attack. You know, black might be able to play this, um, get in h, h5, h4. Um, one could also consider g5 and h5 and so on. That looks like fun. But after bishop b6, white plays queen d3. An exchange. And rook c2. It was really worth putting that rook on c8. This is an excellent strategy. Threatening to take the pawn. So white defends. And now f5. More pressure on white's position. This is very dangerous. So in some cases black is going to exchange here. In some cases push on with f4. Rook c1. Rook c8. Just defending the rook. And yes, if white sort of thinks, oh, well, let's go active and play rook c1, give up a pawn and activate, well, there's a very nice winning move for black. What should black play here? I'll tell you what, I'll have a little slurp of tea. Here we are, cheers. And uh, you have a little think. Black to play. The move is f4. And basically white's queen is overloaded. It can't keep hold of both the bishop and the rook. It's got to move away and one of these pieces is going to drop. Very nice idea. So here white played queen d3, attacking the rook, defended by the queen on c8. So black controls the open file and I mean this is just a dominating position now. Um, you've still got to finish it off, that's the thing. But white is now very passive. f4 comes again, breaking up those pawns. That's very nice. Looking to actually switch to a kingside attack. I mean, if, if pawn takes pawn, then there's a lovely move. Knight g6, and then the knight slams in on f4. That's beautiful. So therefore g4, but that king could be a little drafty now. Um, actually, there's a move uh, here. Queen c5 was played, getting on dark squares, which feels very natural. Um, I also like h5. That's a crafty move. Because if g5, then knight g6 gets in here. And if pawn takes pawn, then king h7. And the idea is to spin that knight around here and get in. But queen c5 was played instead, and that's a pretty good move considering it, it won in just two more moves. Um, I think white's only move here is h5, but white is so passive. I think once this knight gets into the game, then white is done for. But white cracked here. King h3, and after queen f2, that was the end of the show. It says there's one more move, actually, queen d1, not waiting for queen g3 mate. I don't know. Might that might have been the end, but who knows? Sometimes, you know, on the DGT boards they're not recorded properly by at the end of the game. But anyway, Queen F2 is a zinger. That's the end of the game. So really nice game from Black. Well done to Maciej Stelmaschuk. Um, and, and let's just go over some of the strategic points. So Bishop B6 contesting the D5 square. Really nice. Then we had mind the start of the minority attack, also very good. The breakout bishop, exchanging off that that uh, bad bishop. Then we had the bad bishop bounce back down to to d8, and finally it popped out on b6, beautiful. And then black simply managed to invade on the dark squares, culminating in that position. Justice was done. So just a reminder, if you want to get the book on the Kalashnikov, beautiful hardback book from New and Chess, quality stuff. And the course is on sale uh, on Chessable. Do check that out. I'll put the links down there. Thanks for watching.